Hello and a very warm welcome to episode 27 of the Green Bean podcast. My name is Katie and this is my studio in Devon in the southwest of England where I do drawing, knitting, sewing, various other creative projects. There's always something going on here and this podcast is where I share the things that I've been making and a bit of insight into my creative process and what goes on. I also have a scruffy little terrier called Jack and quite often he's sitting on my lap while I'm introducing an episode, but not today. He's in the other room barking at my neighbour who is mowing the lawn. So apologies if you hear him going on in the background. He's just uh, keeping an eye on the neighbourhood and making sure that everybody's behaving the way that they should be. I hope you're doing well. Um, It feels like a while since I've sat here and recorded an episode, Um, but I don't know why. Probably just because it's been a busy month. It's been uh, kind of sunny and warm, even though it's the end of summer here in the UK. I've been out swimming a few times. The weather's been lovely, but it's just starting to turn. The leaves are just starting to turn yellow and fall from the trees. There are acorns and chestnuts all over the place. And I just love this time of year, I really do. It's um, nothing to do with the fact that September is my birthday, Mm, maybe a little bit, Um, but I just love the feeling of the days starting to get shorter. That golden light at the end of the day in September is so beautiful. And um, yeah, whether it's autumn or spring where you are, I hope that you're able to enjoy some of the nice weather, even though the... uh, the pandemic situation and all sorts of other nonsense is going on in the world at the moment. I um, hope you are finding some moments of joy in, in nature and what's going on around you as well. Let's see, what have I got in this episode? I've got some drawing to share with you. I'm working on a new project for my shop, which I'm hoping to put on sale for um, virtual Yarndale next weekend. Um, Yarndale is the yarn show in Skipton in North Yorkshire. It's one of my favourite places in the world and I'm really sad not to be going up there this year, even though obviously it's sensible that it's cancelled. I'm still sad not to be taking part in the event. So I'm preparing my shop and getting ready for that, which is happening online next Saturday and Sunday. I've also got a bit of knitting, a new project that I've cast on, some sewing, I'm going to tell you about these pyjamas that I've made, and a book review. So I hope you enjoy this episode, and of course a little walk in the woods with me and Jack as well.
I'm very happy that Little Jack has just decided that he wants to make an appearance on the podcast. So um, here he is. You right, buddy? Yeah. So in terms of drawing, I've not been doing that much lately. Um, I've mentioned on uh, social media and on Patreon that I've been having a little bit of an up and down time, as I think many of us are at the moment. Things are tricky living in a global pandemic and there's all sorts, all sorts of other atrocities going on around the world at the moment too. And um, it's hard. It's, it feels like it's hard to be a human right now. And um, yeah, just allowing myself to say, actually, you know what? I'm struggling a bit rather than trying to push through and keep things going. And I know that that is something that my viewers don't mind because I've been pretty open and honest about about the way that I work and how my cycles of work go up and down from time to time since the beginning of the podcast. So I hope you don't mind me being a little bit more honest about that. Um, and yeah, um, the the thing that's got hit this time particularly is is drawing. Although with the weather starting to change and turning towards autumn, I'm finding myself inspired again and uh, particularly inspired to add a few new things to my shop. I'm not going to mention the C word because it's only September, we have many months to go, but as somebody who sells products to customers all around the world, it is time to start putting a few festive items in the shop. And that includes some greetings cards. Now, I did some penguins last year with some illustrations that I had, and I'm gonna bring those back because they were really popular, but I'm also gonna add some sheep and I think hopefully some dinosaurs to the range this year as well. Um, but I don't have those drawings ready, so I need to start some fresh scratchboard illustrations to use on those cards. So that is what I'm gonna be drawing today. If you're new to the podcast, you might not have seen me working with Scratchboard before, so I'll chat a little bit about it as a medium. So it's a board covered with a layer of china clay, which is white, and then that's covered over with a layer of Indian ink, which is black, and you use a metal stylus to scrape away the black layer and reveal the white underneath. So it's like um, drawing with a sharp black pen, but in reverse. So you're making bright white marks on black rather than black marks on white. And I really like it because it is slow and tedious, um, intricate, meditative. Those are my favorite kinds of processes. That explains why I'm into knitting, why I'm into hand embroidery, anything that takes an ex excessively long period of time and immense amount of detail, you can guarantee that's something that I'm going to enjoy. So I first picked up Scratchboard, oh gosh, probably about seven years ago. I think it was just after I first moved to Devon. Um, I started working with Scratchboard and I did a piece for Pom Pom Quarterly, the knitting magazine, a six page comic, which you can find in my, um, in my zine, More Than Yarn. And I just loved it. I mean, it took me ages. It took me about six weeks to create that comic because it was the first time I'd really used the medium and I was still getting to grips with it and figuring it out and working out my confidence. But since then it's become really one of my favourite ways to work and I really enjoy the process, although it is quite dusty. So I have to remember to clean my desk uh, from time to time. I'm not going to say often because I'm not that organised, but um, kind of brushing away the excess dust and bits and pieces. And the blades are not great. Um, so I buy my scratch board from a company called SD, E -S 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 -D -E -E. Um, and they supply a lot of art materials and stuff to schools. So I think the styluses that they offer are kind of, they're not superior artist quality and I haven't found anything that really is. So I buy them in big packs. I, I think I last bought a pack of about a hundred and some of them are useless. Um, they just are not suitable at all. And so what I do is I work with them on a knife sharpening block, like a whetstone, 
and try and kind of keep the blade sharp. Sometimes I, I just can't do it. Sometimes I just get a duff one and I have to discard it. But once I get one that is kind of refined to the right kind of point, I can work with it for a long, long time, several pieces of work um, with just top up sharpening here and there to keep it nice, nice and clean and crisp. So yeah, that's a scratch board, one of my favourite ways of working. And what's going to happen with these illustrations? Obviously, the scratch board is limited to black and white. So once I've done the black and white work, I'm going to add a spot colour. In this case, I think it's going to be red for the sheep, or I might add a little bit of green as well. Uh, for the dinosaurs, it's definitely going to be green. Um, and I really like the way that that just lifts the illustration a bit and um, kind of makes it pop. But also when I put it with the um, with the envelopes, which I match to that colour pop, I think it's really, really pleasing to have the envelopes match the colour that's on the card. So that's my plan. <laughs>
I've been feeling in the mood for knitting again lately, which is really nice after what has felt like a long, hot summer of not really being in the mood. Um, and, you know, I'm in England, so it hasn't been that hot or that long. But um, I just got distracted and was finding that I wanted to spend more of my relaxation time sewing or doing jigsaws, which is something I got into over the summer rather than doing my knitting. Um, but it's nice as the weather's been turning to pick my knitting back up. And I've got, as always, several projects on the go. I've, um, I'm still working on the Caledonia jumper, the Raspberry Twirl jumper, which is a gift for my friend Molly. And patrons will know that I've been working hard on a new design over the last few months and not quite ready to share that with you yet. It's with the tech editor and it's coming together, but it's not going to be released for another month or so. Although if you're beady eyed and have watched all of the last few episodes, you might have spotted some clues. I'm not going to say much more than that. Um, so that's been taking up a lot of my knitting time. I've been knitting two samples of that jumper for a photo shoot, which I've got coming up in a few weeks time. So obviously what I needed to do um, to go along with all of those things was cast on a new sock project because I didn't have enough things going on. Um, and I did it because sometimes you're just inspired and in the mood for something. Um, and all of my projects were feeling big and feeling like they were taking a long time and I just felt like something a little bit refreshing in a nice kind of late summery colour to cheer me up and, and feel like I had something that was moving forward more quickly. So this is what I cast on. It is a birch ply sock by Anushka of the Crimson Stitchery podcast here on YouTube and she goes by a sour telling on Instagram um, and she's got several really beautiful sock designs. I really like everything that she comes out with but I particularly liked this one. Um, it's got a kind of slip stitch and rib texture that I, I really, really like the look of. So as soon as she brought the pattern out, I thought I would like to have a go at it. And so here I am with not quite half a sock. I feel like it's half a sock once you've turned the heel and I'm not quite there yet. So um, let's go for a third of a sock. And I've been really enjoying working on it. I love this pale green color which is from Woolly Mammoth, um, which is a yarn dyer based in Northern Ireland. She's called Emma. She also has a podcast here on YouTube and um, she uses all natural dyes. So I love that this is a, a kind of lichenish green color that she's achieved just with nature's colors. It's amazing. And this is a 100% wool sock yarn. It's called her natural sock and um, I th I'm not sure of the blend. I feel like it's something like Cheviot and Blueface Lester, but I'm not certain. And um, it's a twofold yarn, but it's got a high twist, which is why it's showing off these uh, textured stitches really nicely. And I know I've said before that um, no nylon sock yarns aren't always my first choice. I love the idea that they don't have any plastic in them. I think it's great. I walk a lot and I'm really hard on my socks and I don't massively enjoy darning. Um, I will darn and for my no nylon socks I will darn more frequently than the others but um, I picked it for the colour and because I wanted to give the blend a try so um, I'm looking forward to seeing how they wear and if I need to darn them then so be it. I think they'll probably be worth it. But I'm really pleased with how they're looking so far and it's been nice to have a small project on the go that I can dip in and out of in between work sessions while I'm having a cup of tea, that kind of thing. It's a really nice pattern for that because it's just a four row repeat so it doesn't take long to knit one re repeat of the pattern then you can pop it down and come back to it later. So that's it, the Birch Ply Socks by Anishka from Crimson Stitchery and I'm really pleased with how they're looking so far.
As I mentioned earlier, I've been doing quite a lot of sewing over the last few weeks and sort of really enjoying it. I've had some really successful projects. I've been making some underwear, which has been great. Um, and then I thought I'd be brave. I would have another go at making a pair of trousers. So I made a muslin for the Eve trousers from Merchant and Mills. And it was yet another muslin disaster. Um, and I don't know why I do this to myself. I know that trousers drafted according to like standard dress sizes do not fit me. I have a small waist and large hips and they just don't work. But nonetheless, I always try. So I cut the muslin according to the pattern, made them up, tried them on. And as ever, they only just went over my bum, but they had about, well, a space enough to tuck a small dog in the waist. They did not fit. So I found that extremely frustrating. And, you know, I know that I've got the skills to look at the muslin and make the adaptations and the changes that need to happen. But also when you've spent all day sewing something, even if it is out of like, cheap scrap fabric, it's still disheartening to put it on and find that it doesn't fit. So I was grumpy. I was really grumpy with my sewing and I decided that I would make something a bit more straightforward. Uh, first of all, something that was stretchy and something that um, I would never intend to wear out the house. So I wouldn't mind quite so much about how it fitted. And I'm wearing it. <laughs> I thought uh, seen as 2020 is the year of wearing your pyjamas all the time, that I would make myself a pair of fancy, comfortable pyjamas and wear them on the podcast. Why not? So I am just going to grab the two patterns that I used because I can't remember them off the top of my head and I'll talk you through what I did. So I've had this jersey fabric in my stash for quite some time. Um, I was always intending to make pyjamas with it, but when I purchased it, I didn't have a pattern in mind. So I think I overpurchased. I think I had about three and a half meters, so plenty of fabric to play with. And I'm not sure if it's obvious on camera, but it's a dark teal background with a lighter teal triceratops head motif. And I like how from a distance this kind of looks like a leaf. It looks quite... Uh, I'm not going to say sophisticated, but um, it doesn't look like a childish dinosaur print and not that there's anything wrong with the childish dinosaur print, but I like how it's it looks a little bit grown up until you get close and realise that it's dinosaur heads. So I picked out this fabric and I happen to have a bit of contrasting jersey in my stash of a kind of lighter teal that almost matched the dinosaur heads. Not quite, but it's coordinating enough. So I picked two different patterns, one for the t-shirt and one for the trousers. Uh, so let's start with the top. I used Simplicity 8376. And that's just a basic t-shirt pattern with various different shaping options, ruffles, uh, different hemlines, all kinds of things. I found it to be a really good pattern for um, explaining how to work with jersey. Um, I reckon it would be suitable for a first time jersey sewist, um, which I'm not. I've been making a few bits of underwear in the background that I haven't talked about on the podcast yet, but I've been getting to grips with sewing jersey a bit more. And it's worth talking about my overlocker. I know I've talked in the past about getting the hang of my overlocker, and I'd like to say that I've made a breakthrough, but I haven't. I've made like the opposite of a breakthrough I've got in a in a hissy fit with my overlocker it's just not cooperated I've followed loads of tutorials on YouTube to um, figure out how to thread it properly I'm sure that I'm doing it right everything seems to be in order but it's not working so I got grumpy put it back in the box put it in the naughty corner and I've been sewing my jersey just using the zigzag stitch on my ordinary sewing machine and it turns out I'm perfectly happy with that as both a stitch for making stretchy seams, you use quite a narrow zigzag and a much wider, more spaced out zigzag to finish the edges. You don't even need to do that because Jersey doesn't fray like woven fabrics do. 
um, but it gives a nice professional finish. And I've even put these pyjamas and some of my underwear through the washing machine, which I don't generally do with my handmade clothes. I'm generally a bit particular about them and wash them by hand. I've put these through the washing machine and they've all been fine. So I'm getting sidetracked. Where do we go? Um, so the t-shirt pattern, I sewed it on my normal sewing machine and I made the size medium, which is one size up for my bust measurement based on what the pattern recommends, if that makes sense. So it would have suggested I made the small, I made the medium. And the only change I made was to the shaping at the sides. So it had like an hourglass shape and went in a little bit at the waist and out. And instead of that, I just cut it straight from the underarm to the side. I wanted it to be more like a like a just basic t-shirt shape. But apart from that, I followed the pattern, which was really easy to work with and very quick. And I'm very happy with the result. As for the trousers, um, which I'll show you a photo of rather than stand up and show you my bum, um, I used this pattern, Birda 6659. Um, and it's like a basic sweatpant pattern. Uh, now, which size did I make? I believe I made the size 44, which is the largest one available in this packet. Uh, there's another packet that covers the larger sizes. Um, obviously, I made the long legged version. And again, like the t-shirt, I used some of the teal jersey as a contrast for the waistband and the leg cuffs. Now, this was a pattern that had a, um, a lot less detail in the instructions. Um, it's labelled as easy, which it is, so it's very straightforward, but it definitely requires a knowledge of sewing and a knowledge of sewing with jersey to follow the instructions. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for your first time jersey project. But if you've done one or two things before, it's perfectly approachable and there's nothing too complicated to worry about in there. Obviously, because it's stretchy, there's no zips or fasteners to contend with. Um, the most complicated thing, which was really not that complicated at all, was putting together the pockets. And I'm pretty excited to have a pair of pajamas that have pockets in. I can show you them. Um, so yeah, that's my pyjamas and unbelievably for all the woes that I go through of trying to find trousers that fit, these ones with the elasticated waistband fit perfectly. I didn't have to make any instructions. I made the size straight out of the packet that was recommended for my hips. They fit perfectly and I've got all the pattern pieces ready and I'm going to make another set as soon as I get another sewing day. I've got some more dinosaur jersey fabric and I'm going to get back to making another set of pyjamas.
I've been doing quite a lot of reading lately and in part I think that's been inspired by uh, spending a bit less time knitting but also I've just had a run of really good books and I'm excited to share all of them with you but I'm gonna restrain myself and cover one at a time because I want to give them each the uh, the time that they deserve to talk about. So the first book that I really loved reading was this one, Tales from the Inner City by Sean Tan. And Sean Tan is, my, I'm not going to say my very favourite author because it seems unfair to pick one, but definitely among my favourite authors and has been for, I would say, almost 20 years. Um, I actually first picked up his picture book, The Red Tree, in a bookshop in Bristol where I was living as a student and it kind of changed my life. It's um, He has beautiful um, acrylic illustrations in there that depict scenes describing what it's like to experience and live with depression and I was really struggling with my mental health at the time and I had never seen anything that spoke so visually and viscerally about um, about mental illness and how and how it feels and it really inspired me um, and started me on the journey towards becoming an illustrator and eventually writing my graphic memoir Lighter Than My Shadow. So I really credit that book with being a turning point in my life and and yeah so naturally I've obsessively followed Sean Tan's work ever since then and collected all of his books all of which are amazing and Tales from the Inner City is his most recent compilation. Um, it's a set of short stories and it actually it's quite a lot of prose. Um, a lot of his previous work has been in a picture book format, so really the narrative hangs on the illustrations. Um, but his last few books, Tales from Outer Suburbia and this one, Tales from the Inner City, are more prose with illustrations rather than picture books or um, comics as such. But his writing is amazing and the, um, the images still add a lot to the narrative and obviously they're beautifully painted. So this book, um, each chapter is hinged around an animal and they're definitely kind of fantasy, magic realism, parallel universe type stories, but they're not so far from reality that you can't imagine them. And I really love how playful they are, but at the same time, they're really poignant and challenging and I kind of looking at the environmental situation and the impact of humans on the environment in, in a really creative way. So I've, I really enjoyed reading it. Um, I rushed through it over a couple of nights, but I'm definitely going to go back and kind of spend a bit more time with it, get to know those paintings. But if you haven't come across Sean Tan before, he has some really incredible work. Um, obviously The Red Tree is a absolute classic for me, um, but his graphic novel The Arrival is really interesting. It's, um, again, it's a work of fantasy, but it um, it covers the experience of somebody being an immigrant in another country and it's entirely wordless, which I think is really, really clever, the way that he conveys that, um, the dissonance of that experience. Oh, it's beautiful. Really, anything by Sean Tan, you can't go wrong. Um, I hope that you might give him a try and, and get in, get to enjoy some of his work too.
thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Green Bean Podcast. If you liked hanging out and you would like to do so more, you can support the podcast on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Katie Greenbean. And there I publish an extra episode in between every one that goes out on YouTube. So roughly every couple of weeks I publish a podcast. I also share in between vlogs and chats with my patrons about other projects that I'm working on and updates about Jack, what's going on in my life, that kind of thing. So I hope you'll consider checking us out on Patreon and becoming one of the people who helps make this podcast possible. You can also find me on Instagram as Katie Greenbean and you can find my shop on Etsy. Thanks again for watching and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye.